again, it's Joe V from 4x5 Photography. In this next video, we're going to talk about how to use a view camera to really capture the creative image that you're looking for. And there's, there's uh, two important concepts that we talk about here. One has to do with the, uh, the plane and the angles that you create when you adjust your, your camera. And then the second has to do with depth of focus, because depth of focus uh, or depth of field with a view camera is different than a uh, regular camera, a digital camera, or any camera you may be using that has a fixed relationship between the uh, plane of sharp focus that as we've seen in previous videos sits out here, the plane of focus, and then the film plane, or if you're using a digital camera, the sensor plane. So on regular cameras, those re that relationship has these three lines in parallel. And that dynamic is such that if I adjust on this camera, for example, or any camera, the depth of field by closing down or opening up my aperture, what happens is that the, uh, the parts of the image that I'm looking at that are in focus, the depth of that image that's in focus changes. So as I open my, if I, if I have my aperture at its widest point, uh, at the, with the lens wide open, then I'm going to have a very narrow plane of sharp focus here, or depth of sharp focus. If I close that down, the field in which uh, elements of that image are in focus is going to get wider to the point where it may be even to infinity. And that's exactly how a view camera works when you've got this parallel line and relationship between the film plane and the focal plane. Uh, but that changes as we manipulate the front or rear standard. And so in this video I want to talk about the first uh, guiding rule that uh, defines how this change of relationships works in relation to sharp focus. And uh, this video uh, will be followed up with one on depth of field. So this is, this is really step uh, 1A uh, of two steps that uh, talk about how you can really use this camera to get the image that you're looking for in terms of which elements in that image you want in focus uh, and uh, then how you get those in focus. So uh, the first thing I want to talk about is let's, uh, let's adjust our front standard here to an extreme angle so that we can exaggerate the discussion of this rule. So in previous videos we talked about how uh, this film plane when changed, when you change the angle of the focal plane, it adjusts the angle of sharp focus and even regardless of what your aperture is, how you can achieve sharp focus at the four corners of the image by adjusting this front standard. And so there's a rule that guides all this, and that rule is something called the Scheimflug rule. And that's um, the name of a gentleman who created this, or defined it, he, he determined the math that, uh, that makes all this make sense, which I don't understand and don't worry about, but basically Mr. Scheimflug said, uh, and proved that these three angles, when you adjust the angle of your front standard here, if you were to draw a line up and down this angle from the, the rear standard, this angle from the front standard, and then the angle of the plane of sharp focus, at some point under the camera where those lines intersect, that determines your point uh, or the angle of sharp focus. So by changing the relationship, between the front standard and the plane of sharp focus, it changes, raises or lowers the point at which those lines intersect. So picture in your mind here a line running straight down the video at the film plane, a line running down at the angle of the uh, front standard or the, the focal plane, and a line running straight back from the plane of sharp focus. At some point, those three lines will touch. And when they touch, that's the point at which you have a sharp image. And so when you're focusing the view camera, your focusing approach is to, if in this case, you're looking to adjust the plane of sharp focus through tilt, through, through forward tilt, you're going to adjust this plane until those lines meet underneath the camera, those imaginary lines, and the angle that it creates with your plane of sharp focus puts the elements of the image that you want to capture sharply in their sharpest focus, at their sharpest focus points. Now the rule says not only does uh, th do those three lines 
intersect at some point below the camera, right? If I have a very little, you know, a shallow amount of front tilt here, they're probably intersecting if I imagine those lines going down below the ground here. But they do intersect. And the rule says that whatever angle this front standard is at, it's going to be half the angle of the plane of sharp focus. So if I match these angles up, let's again get an extreme length here, extreme forward tilt. So if I match the angle of the front standard up with the plane of sharp focus, in this example my cardboard, I know that this, is, this angle here is about half the angle of where the plane of sharp focus would be. So that would mean my plane of sharp focus would be about here. So the angle between the back standard and my plane of sharp focus and the angle here in my plane of sharp focus, this would be exactly half. That's what the rule, and as I said, Mr. Scheinflug proved that with math, that uh, it works that way. Um, but it's really the basis around which a uh, view camera works. And that's the case whether I adjust my front standard or whether I adjust my rear standard too, because again, all that's happening here is I am changing the angle of these three planes, focal plane, I'm sorry, film plane, focal plane, and my angle of sharp focus. And so Scheinflug says all these angles must intersect to achieve uh, a, a sharp image. And so wherever those angles intersect, as long as they do, some part of my image is going to be in sharp focus. And so the magic now is to adjust these two elements, front and rear standard, to achieve the, uh, the sharp focus in my image that I'm looking for. And before we talk about that, we've got another topic that we need to talk about, and that's how depth of field comes into play here. And that'll be in my next video. But most importantly, the relationship between these three planes, and I, I keep saying it over and over because it's the basis around which uh, you use a view camera to get to capture the image that you want. Um, but focal plane, sorry, I'm film plane, focal plane, and my plane of sharp focus. And if I understand the relationship between these three, I can basically understand uh, how the, the changes in these angles um, change my plane of sharp focus. And conceptually in my mind, I can think about how I want to capture an image uh, when I adjust these. So that's the shine fluid rule. Uh, I'll put uh, some information in the comments about it, particularly how you spell it, so that you can look it up and read more about it. There's a couple great sites on the web that show you a graphic about how that angle changes. Uh, there's another element to it that, uh, I forget his name, but a gentleman created after shine flu. That's something called the hinge rule, which talks about where these things intersect and what happens when all of these planes change. So I'll put some information in the comments, and uh, if you want to look it up, you can. So next video coming up is depth of focus. Thanks for watching, and uh, watch for that one.